everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I'm here today with a Thrifty Thursday Thrifty Canucks. You can find in my description box below the information on those two collaborations across our YouTube uh, universe. And so I don't have a huge, um, huge, huge thrift haul, but I have like a little one, a little sizable, not, not huge. <laughs> so first is this book, In the Company of Women. Inspiration and advice from over 100 makers, artists, and entrepreneurs by Grace Bonney, the founder of Design Sponge. So I picked this book up to read to kind of like just hang out in my studio and like, you know, read it because I find these kind of books quite inspiring. I also love looking at women's spaces. I love the magazine Where Women Work. Um, or Where Women Create, rather. Um, I always like reading the perspective of other diverse cool women so yeah this looks like a really oh Genevieve I remember her from TLC trading spaces years ago I think one of the first episodes of that that I ever watched where I was like wow this this woman is up my alley she was literally like hot gluing dry moss or possibly no wet moss I don't know <laughs> to the wall of someone's bedroom that they would have to spray to like keep it maintained I just remember thinking like what a completely impractical um interior design plan but like I just love how whacked out the idea was it could totally see myself doing something <laughs> that bizarre <laughs> Because, you know, when your mind runs away with you, you just hold its hand and you, you let it go. So, yeah, this looks like a really cool book. And there were a few um, artists in here that I that I recognize. I mean, Sarah Newberger, I'm familiar with her work. Um, but, yeah, so I'm just, I, I honestly could sit here and keep going, but I won't because you'll be like, what is this? <laughs> so there's that. Then... Okay, one of my very favorite birds in the whole world is the kakapo. It is a green owl, basically. It looks like a green owl. And this is Hokey, the story of a kakapo. Let's just say I got this book and then I immediately took out my green watercolors and I'm going to be creating some kakapo stuff, I think. I'm going to be playing with it. Um, I love so much the kakapo it's a beautiful and quite endangered rare beautiful bird and this is like the story of one that was rescued and like I mean look how unbelievably pretty they are if you've never seen one before just google kakapo k-a-k-a-p-o kakapo um they're beautiful birds and I was so I also love this feather this image of this feather so yeah so sweet I want a kakapo <laughs> um that book yeah then I found so for a super long time I've been collecting and I mean I don't even know how long I've had like a pile of things I have a little folder of crow things because I do want to make a crow probably more than one crow journal eventually or crow like that has a crow theme of some kind I, I usually will add a little more than just it's a crow journal I'll probably do something with it so this is Carmine the Crow by Heidi Holder it's a children's book and it totally cracked me up because one of my favorite co-workers that I worked with in the past his name is Carmine and he's still a good friend of mine and so yeah I want to read this book I think it will be really cute um I I already am seeing like the it's probably one of those magpie collecting kind of um, stories because you know all of these birds that are in that family they are quite quite spirited and I also love that these oh he's got his feet on the little footstool that's cute I also love that there's a lot of um, anthropomorphic images in here of animals and clothes then I found this is my second copy of this I have a hard copy of this book and I've been wanting to make a book with it like possibly storybook journal it's East of the Sun and West of the Moon by Mercer Mayer. You know, Mercer Mayer, who's famous for that little brown, um, what is his name? Like the little one or something? I can't remember his name, but the, the little brown guy. And he's got a little family. Like if you look up Mercer Mayer, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Um, I can't believe I can't remember his name. <laughs> but yeah, um, this book has gorgeous illustrations. Who's it illustrated by? Let me see if I can figure that out and actually give them credit here. 
Maybe it is Mercer Mayer, actually. Hmm. I don't see any illustrator mentioned, so perhaps it's Mercer Mayer. Beautiful illustrations. I love this main character. Let's bring her up a little so you can see. My light's a little glary today. Hmm. But yeah, it's a lovely book. Dragon there. So pretty. Okay, then... I found this cute little book. It's called Winter Wonderland. Sleigh's bells ring. Are you listening? And it's got these little mice and this little <laughs> cute snowman. This is just too cute. I was like, okay, I can get this. It's cute. It's got little mice. I could see it being quite a cute, fun, wintry journal. A little storybook journal. I think it'd be charming. I love the... Uh, the chipmunks and the mice and they're playing and the little birds and it's got the winter wonderland song at the back but yeah very sweet book and then I found rainy day magic by Marie Louise Gay I'm a huge fan of her illustration style I just really enjoy her work um, yeah so I don't have this one and this will probably become a journal storybook journal more than likely. And then I found another book that I've had before and I've used it not on its own. It's Over the Rainbow, Paintings by Eric um, Puyberet. So this is the song from, you know, um, Somewhere Over the Rainbow from Wizard of Oz. And it's kind of illustrated and the words are changed a bit, um, and it's like, yeah, it's really interesting and modern. And I've made, um, I made a really fun bunch of ephemera out of one already. I really love how the moon has been illustrated and just the flowy kind of illustration style. And this one also came with the CD in the back, so I'll probably listen to it and read it along with my kids first because I didn't have the CD in the other one. The other one I had I think was a hardcover too. And then the last thing I got, and I got it just because it's just old and lovely um, and it's held together with this broken elastic. It's a music book and just this EMS on the front and it is separated from its its spine. It's very old paper, but also very nice paper. So I think it's German, maybe. I'm not sure. Um, maybe not. Hold on. So Swan and Pentland, 49 Buchanan Street of Glasgow. It says at the bottom here. Sorry, it's hard to... Let me bring it up and show you. See? London, A. Hammond & Co. Um, so it's a book of waltzes, um, some of which are duets. This is um, Freuling, Freu, Freuling Slider. Oh, goodness me. Help me, Louisa Heinzel, <laughs> if you're out there. But it doesn't have words, really. It's just music and weathery and old paper. Um, it does have, though, some images in it. Illustrations, rather. Um, let me see if I can find them. It's very difficult to flip through. Here's one. Look at that. And I don't, I don't know the year of this book, but I suspect it is turn of the century, early 1900. Um, could be 1800s for sure. This uh, homage or dom. So there's some French, there's some English. Um, I love this page. These are just beautiful, like, introduction pages to each song, and some of the music is quite little. Interpolation on Edward Strauss. So there's another nice title page. Looks like someone was trying to draw the silhouette of a woman here. That's funny. <laughs> Oh, that one's gold. That's beautiful. That's all gold. Hmm. It's 
Sweetheart's Waltz. Just an empty page. Looks like it's maybe missing a page. I don't know. The Earl and Countess of Dufferin, the Farewell Lancers. Hmm. This is like the first full color image. Mary Tunes, a set of Lancers. Beautiful. I was trying to see if there's any other good images to show you here. Looks like there was something round here, but it's gone. Here's another one. Oh wow, look at those, the festive season. It's all Christmassy. Okay, so that's that. I thought that was kind of cool. All right, so that's from one place then. Um, this is from a couple weeks ago. So this was 75 cents. This, the wood handled, looks like hand carved stamp. Now, like, see this is kind of like a an image of kind of a crudely drawn person, sort of. That's not what I got it for. I'm actually gonna remove this completely and use this as an inker because I love this nice heavy wood handle. Um, and I can I can certainly replace the, the stuff on here, but I actually think that it's probably gonna be just fine to do some inking with. Maybe I will test it out on a little scrap of paper here. Oh yeah, it's got a nice handhold to it. You know, sometimes it's nice to have like a bigger, a bigger handle. So yeah, that will come in handy. And I found a little deck of cards that are Beatrix Potter. Um, and they're very cute. They're just little, they're all like different um, Beatrix Potter. And on the back, they, they all have this same image, but the cards themselves, there's a bunch of different patterns because you know, you need all of the different faces of the cards, right? So there's a few different patterns. These are all every which way. But I thought they were very sweet and I am due to do Beatrix Potter eventually. I have an idea for a Beatrix Potter kind of project. Like if you'll recall, I did kind of, um, when I did the Adams Family type scrapbook for my Release the Craft and Design Team project that that one time it was a bit of a scrapbook and I'm thinking of doing a Beatrix Potter type scrapbook but like a smaller format maybe um, and kind of like you know to tell the story of Beatrix Potter a little bit like if you if you watch Catherine Brown Clark she did a similar kind of book with Edith Holden because Edith Holden has that memoir that was sort of the um, biography that was written about her the Edwardian lady um, and I kind of I don't know I'm, I'm throwing ideas that have those inspirations um, in my brain around about that so this is is another book I found, Yago Hortel Picture Pinchers, 2006 to 2011. I have a hair stuck to me, and I think it's from my dog. It is. It is indeed. <laughs> okay, so this is. I like the cover, and the cover is what drew me in. This book was like just hanging around um, at this store where books are all like 50 cents. So I I picked it up because it was just really cool. It's got a lot of cool like painting type bits, you know, like I thought it would be good for artsy type journals. So I'll probably just sort of cut it down to just what I want to keep and not keep the whole book. Oh yeah, and then this. Um, Wabi Sabi Suki, The Essence of Japanese Beauty. So already pretty in love with the cover. And then inside the book was paper. This interesting folded. 
paper is actually like a big sheet that's got splatters of gold and silver and a really nice texture to it almost like watercolor paper but not quite so it feels like a handmade paper and then there's this as well that was in there so those are all inside the the tuck of this book and so wabi sabi suki the essence of japanese beauty um it's a photography book and I'm a huge fan of these kind of books that like they've helped me many many times set up aesthetics in journals that I've made and I love this mm -hmm. now it's got really nice paper in it The Tale of Fergus Frog, A Story of Pond Life, <laughs> illustrated by Martin Ursel, and I love this little book. I've got, I've had a few of these different little books before. They have really cute pictures. They're very sweet little books. I like using them. I think I've even had this one before. I like using a page or so in a, in a journal, um, just like a commonplace book, but yeah, it's a really sweet book. And then I found this, Hickory by Palmer Brown. I better get this tape off of here. Uh, look at that sweet cover. Isn't that cute? And so it's a sweet little book with amazing illustrations. This one is from 1978. And it's like a little chapter book with these mice. And they have a really nice kind of linear illustration style like lots of strokes almost like pointillism but like with the, the little fine strokes kind of reminds me of um not maurice sendak yeah maurice sendak yeah yeah oh, and then i found a good book that i just want to read um boo 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 and it is Tanya Tagak Split Tooth. So if you don't know Tanya Tagak, she is an Inui throat singer and a really cool person. Um, and she she has incredible music if you look up her music. It's a nice white book, but I didn't get it for journaling. I got it for reading. And I guess, um, I can't remember what this this is about a girl growing up in Nunavut in the 1970s this me I don't know if this is her story or not but she's very cool she's an improvisational performer avant-garde composer and experimental recording artist she won the 2014 Polaris Music Prize for her album um, animism a work that disrupted the music world in canada and beyond with its powerful original vision while the polaris signaled an awakening in tanya tagak's art and messages she was touring and collaborating with an elite international circle of artists for over a decade tanya's most recent album retribution was released in fall 2016 so yeah she's really cool and i wanted to read this book it looks like it has some illustrations in it too which is kind of nice it's nice when you come upon an illustration when you're reading. Um, but yeah, looks like a fun book. And then the last thing I have is this. And I didn't pay $4 for it. I paid $2 because books are on half price this day at my at my mission store so um they were clearing out like i guess a lot of books because they'd gotten i think a donation from a book sale of a lot of coffee table type books so this is klimt big white book from toshin and I, I always love klimt this is the world in female form and so um obviously lots of nice art from Klimt in here. A bit of Aubrey Beardsley by the look of it. Um, yeah, I, I like Klimt. I've seen I've seen a Klimt show. Beautiful work. I always like his his dots and his style. It's very nice. He also has a real knack of painting the, the female form beautifully and um, 
I like the way he collages and embellishes things. That's a nice picture of him in his garden, I think. Gustav Klimt was not was not gregarious. He was a man of few words who preferred solitude to society. His garden not only inspired his flower paintings, it was the wellspring from which he drew strength for all his work. And there he is just in his garden. And then a painting. Farm garden. Flower garden. 1905-6. So that's kind of nice. So that is it for me for today for my thrift haul. I hope you enjoyed seeing the bits that I got. I um, Again, it's, it's not too, too much, so I don't have too much to put away, <laughs> thankfully. Um, and I hope you're doing well. And until next time, may the thrifting fairies be with you. Bye for now.